Hi everyone, welcome back to the Coding M channel. Today we'll be talking about Google Hashcode, which is one of Google's two main programming competitions, with Google Code Jam being the other. In Google Hashcode, you are tasked with finding the best solution you can find for a real world problem, such as the one we're gonna see today. Google Hashcode is also played in teams, which is quite rare for a coding contest. And it also involves a lot of collaboration. So it's very important to find a way to collaborate with your team and code together on the same code base. It's also very limited in time. You have only four hours in the qualifying round to implement a solution, run it on all six test cases and submit your best answer you can so you can run High, as high as you can on the leaderboard. So this year there were more than 12,000 teams registered on Google Hashcode and my team finished in 67th place, which is a very good performance we are already really proud of. It's my seventh participation this year and it's the first time I get into the top 100, so I'm very proud. So let me explain first the problem statement and then the solution we came up with with my team. The principle of this year's problem was that you have several coding projects that you have to manage and you also have people that you have to allocate on those projects. Each project will give you some amount of points when it's completed and your objective is to maximize the number of points you get at the end of the time. You don't have to complete every project but Obviously, it's often better. There are four main game mechanics that we have to play with. We have a list of projects that's provided to us. Each project has some duration, so for example, 10 days, and it also needs a certain amount of contributors. So for example, here we'll need, for example, a C++ contributor, which is level four, JS contributor, which is a uh, level three, and let's say an HTML contributor, which is uh, level eight. We are also provided with a list of people who are the contributors for the projects. Each contributor starts with uh, some amount of skill in uh, various areas. So here, let's say we have a contributor, let's call him John. Uh, John is a uh, level six in C++. Let's say. And let's say um, design uh, level two, maybe. He's a beginner in design. Here, for example, we can allocate John to this slot in the first project because he has sufficient level in C++. And so for each project, you have to find contributors that have at least the required level. To complete a project, you have to find one person for each required skill. You cannot have one person uh, for two different skills, but there's a mechanic of mentoring that we'll get into in a second. And let's take another project which has, for example, two contributors needed. We'll have one that's uh, level, requires a contributor of level maybe um, three in C++ and uh, one in design. So here John could fill up both positions, but we are not allowed to put uh, the same contributor in several positions at once. But let's take another contributor here who has, for example, JS level uh, seven and C++ level two. Here we could not allocate this person to the project, to the second project, but there is a mentoring mechanic that says that if you allocate someone to a project where they are only one short on the required level. So here, for example, Mary has um, level two in C++ and there's level three required. But since John will be allocated to here, he has sufficient level in design, that's all right. And he's got also sufficient level in C++. John can mentor Mary. So he can give her the bonus point that she needs to uh, complete that position. And so the project can be fulfilled. During the eight days of the project, both contributors will be unavailable to complete other projects. So you will have to be wise regarding the order uh, in which you complete the projects and who you put on the different tasks. This hash code problem also had one interesting mechanic. If you take a project where you have exactly the required level of skill or you are one rank below, so you're getting mentored, then you will earn one point of skill in that area after the project completes. So let's take, for example, the first test case of the competition. This one is very simple, of course. Uh, it's the first one of six and there are others with tens of thousands of contributors and projects. What it tells us, for example, is that contributor Anna will have a skill level 2 in C++, Bob will have skill level 5 in HTML and CSS, and Maria will have um, skill level 3 in Python. There are also three projects that we can complete to gain points. So here, Project Web Chat 
has a duration of 10 days, so it's completed in 10 days. It will give us 20 points when completed and uh, 20 is the date of the deadline. So after day 20, if we haven't completed that project, we will lose one point per day. This project needs two contributors. The first contributor will need skill level at least three in Python and the second contributor will need skill level at least three in HTML. Here's a possible solution for that problem. It says that the web server project will be completed first with Bob and Anna in the first and second roles res respectively. Then the logging project with Anna, then the web chat project with Maria and Bob. The projects are given in order and will start as soon as their contributors are available. So here the web server project will start immediately. Then the logging project will need to wait for Anna to complete the web server one before starting. Google Hash Code is played in teams of between two and four people. In my team there were three of us and I was working on the solver so this is the heart of the solution. There's a lot of other things that you have to work on, especially parsing, writing the files, submitting things like that but my my job was to design a solver then uh, we had several iterations but here's how the final thing works it works in a fairly simple way we are using a greedy algorithm to select which projects we're going to take and then allocate the um, contributors as best as we can on those so our whole solution is about 140 lines it took us about four hours to get there and uh, with several iterations if you want to take a look at this whole source code i will put a link in this video description but uh, let me explain in with drawings. Our solution works by going forward in time. So at first we will start um, at t equals zero and we'll try to find a project that fits at t equals zero. Usually, well, that's the time where all your contributors are available. So you should have a project that fits. You will also have a um, list of projects and our goal will be to find the best project we can at that time. So um, that's a greedy algorithm because uh, we are only evaluating at that time and not uh, regarding the other projects. We are only interested in what this one project can bring us. So each project will be given its own score at that time, uh, which I'll get into in a moment. And we'll go through the projects from the best potential score to the worst to try to find one where we can find actually contributors that are available to complete this project. So the interest we have in a project will be based on two things. First, the score that it would give us if it were completed at that time. So in the problem statement, we are told that um, projects have a base score which decreases over time. So it's best to complete projects earlier. So this is the first metric that we're going to use to determine the order in which projects will be evaluated and the other metric is the workforce needed so for example if one project needs 10 people for 80 days it's gonna have 800 people days so we're gonna compute the ratio between how many points this project will give us if it's completed divided by the workforce needed because well if you need more people you will have uh, more contributors unavailable for some amount of time which uh, is not desirable so once we have ranked all these projects by decreasing interest. We're gonna first take the first one and see if we can find contributors for it. Finding the perfect allocation of contributors for a given project is quite hard, especially given that the availability of uh, contributors will vary over time. So we're gonna do it in a greedy manner. So. We will have several slots and in a similar manner we did to find uh, the order of projects we're gonna do for this project for contributors we have a priority list so the contributors that have exactly that level will be put first because they have a potential to level up and we will not be overkill with uh, the contributors we put so for example if we need a level one and we put a contributor that's a level eight uh, that's bad because we are kind of wasting potential that could be used elsewhere so we're gonna uh, rank them by increasing level in that specific area and uh, allocate the first one that matches. This is not optimal because, well, we may use a contributor for a role that uh, they could feel better somewhere else and that nobody else could fill up. But um, that's the way we can do um, that's faster and more efficient. And as a reminder, we only have four hours to code. So it's always better to start a very simple algorithm and improve it 
later. So here, for example, we need a JavaScript contributor with level eight. So once we have ranked our uh, contributors in ascending order and found the best candidate for a given role in this project, we will go to the second role and do the same, try to fill it up. So when we go to the second task to fill up, there are two differences. The first one, obviously, is that this contributor we selected is not going to be available for that one task. And also, starting from the second role, we're going to have a mentorship that's in place. So we're going to look for the contributor we allocated, which roles they could potentially mentor. So for example, this person will have sufficient level to mentor that role. So here we are allowing ourselves to lower the recruitment bar by one. And so we, we are doing that in a forward basis for the next searches in the next roles. So once we have found one contributor for each of the roles required, it means the project can be completed. And so we will commit to it and add it to our solution. It's not guaranteed that with this technique, we're gonna find an allocation of contributors for the best project we can. So that's why we will iterate from the best scores to the worst and try to find uh, one project that fits. So then we will start the search again by trying to find another project that can be completed. This time, well, we'll have less contributors because there are contributors that have been allocated to other projects. So uh, maybe at some point we'll start over the search over and over again. And so at some point we will no longer find projects that we find the correct allocation of workers for. So at that point, it doesn't mean that there are no more projects that we can complete, but it means that we can maybe advance in time to try to free up more contributors. So here we'll go from t equals zero to uh, t equals one maybe. So at t equals one, we may have one project that's finished and so the contributors are now free and so we can run the search again. So at some point we will have exhausted our options with t equals one, we can move on with t equals two, etc, etc. And so at some point we are gonna reach the end of the time and all the projects that have been added to our solution will constitute what we submit to the Google Hashcode website. The score of our submission will then be computed according to the rules that were provided and each point given by a project will be added to our score. We can submit multiple times and only the best solution will be kept. My team made 36 submissions in total and we we ended up with a score of around 3.44 million, which is quite far from uh, the team in first place with more than uh, 4 million points. But we'll still ended up in the top 100, uh, which is uh, still a very good performance for us. And we're especially proud of our solution on uh, test case C, because here you can see we performed better than the best scoring team on that particular test case. I hope you enjoyed this quick recap of the Google Hashcode Qualifier 2022. If you want more content about competitive programming and technical interviews, feel free to follow the channel for more. Bye.